when we look at the uh, filling fluids, it's very complicated. This is a day-to-day -day concern. It is a very complex issue because I deal in relation to what? We're talking about sepsis, but it's the initial phase. I think the initial phase, well, it's, it's been dealt with the crystalloids over the first uh, 30, 35 milliliters per kilogram in the first hours, and then ideal, but on the basis of uh, which criteria? Ideal in terms of safety, well, that seems to be an essential concern. And as you know, hydro terminants which are not being discussed in this um, seminar have been withdrawn because they create excess mortality due to renal failure amongst the patients. I did in terms of efficacy, well, that's a huge issue. Efficacy in relation to what? It's a filling fluid. Well, is it in terms of the filling or is it in terms of catechular mines? Is it in terms of the results? Is it in terms of mortality? If you look at mortality, we will see the other products that are dealt with, but crystalloids and mortality, there's not much to be said there. Is it on the uh, um, negative side effects? Is it on the issue of eff eff efficacy? And also, we have to look at the cost effectiveness. So, we'll look at this regarding albumin. We won't talk about the other products because I think these will be dealt with afterwards. But you will see immediately the question in itself is a, a very complex one safety. Of course, safety first. Clearly, albumin is a product which is non-recombining. There are publications. It's a derivative of blood, and therefore we have to ask ourselves whether there is not a risk with albumin as there is with the other blood derivatives. But in that regard, we are fairly confident because here you see all the different manufacturing methods of albumin depending on the company with different fractions. Um, it does not, even though the product has been on commercialized since the post four years, there is no contamination linked to a product derived from blood, a de blood derivative. So all the data that we have at present, um, all the monitoring that has been conducting, and in France we're extremely sensitive to this issue when a patient uh, shows uh, Kreuzfeld Jakob, uh, the patients are with the products are withdrawn, the patients are monitored, but despite the tons of albumin that have been sold around the world, there is no known risk of contamination or infection arising from blood derivatives. So we're fairly confident on that front uh, until uh, proof of the contrary, but all the infection inf infection aspects show that there is no risk. Now, as for efficacy, well, we know the physiopathology of the septic shock. You have a very good article in a review in the New England Journal of Medicine with uh, not only the clinical information, but physiopathological information that is up to date. And when you look at the features of albumin, it's a product which has benefits in relation to physiopathology. Apart from the filling aspect, clearly it is a product, it's an anti-extracellular, anti-oxidative product with a stabilizing effect. So in theory, it will be of interest for physiopathological purposes. And there are many studies that show that in relation to saline solutions, to other colloids, colloids, colloids albumin enables an increase of plasmatic uh, expansion. The delta PV based on plasmatic volume shows that albumin is better than others in that regard with albumin, with a 5% dose of albumin. And in that respect, I think we're fairly confident. But why is it better than other colloids? Well, looking based on the studies by Marcus Rehm and his team, uh, Jacob's team, there is a double barrier concept for albumin. In other words, uh, 
the other colloids are intravascular or remain intravascular and due to the physical characteristics of albumin L would be not only intravascular but would um, go into the glycocalyx with an oncotic impact that would be better than the other fluids even though in theory the oncotic power is less but the expansive impact is greater so this is an interesting effect and regarding sepsis there may well be an alteration a worsening of glycocalyx, which is not always easy to deal with. This is a theoretical effect, but it's an impact that might make the product um, interesting. When you look at the oxidative stress, albumin has an impact on um, oxidative stre stress, and it has been shown very clearly that in that regard, Albumin components that are important are the impact on cysteine 34, CYS34, which is the marker of its oxidative um, stress, which is very important. And this is where you confronted with a problem that's not often discussed which is that the, the product you buy in relation to the actual product because when you look at the purification, the filtering phase, uh, the safety procedures, albumin is actually altered. And when you look at human albumin, which uh, you see in the A section, where you have several forms of albumin that are mo moving around, you see in the B section, the lower section, is the commercial product you have a very fragmented um, form of albumin which is not the original albumin which in terms of its antioxidative capacity which is um, the part shown on the right whereas you in your albumin if we were able to analyze this we have a 20 percent length of your cysteine 34 which means that 80 percent of your albumin retains its antioxidative capacity but depending on the vendor you have an alteration of the albumin and the antioxidative capacity is severely diminished so one may say that it's antioxidative but what you buy is not necessarily a final product and what you buy is not necessarily what you think you have purchased. But when you conduct a perfusion using albumin, these are old studies done by Kinnan, you see that compared to patients shown on the right who are being given a placebo, you have the ability to increase albumin very significant through perfusion and by you do that you increase the antioxidative capacity which hinges on the quantity of albumin and this is the second concept that emerges it's an important one which is that the effects apart from the oncotic impact the other impacts uh, on the sepsis depend on the dose the quantity of albumin that you have with a threshold of approximately 20 to 30 30 grams per litre. Below that threshold, you cannot wait for the stabilising effect on the membrane. You cannot wait for the um, oxidative. You shouldn't expect the antioxidative effect. So that's an important consideration. And this multiple impact of albumin, when you conduct a test on a rat, you have uh, you make a shock. Uh, on, with a shock to the cardiac um, uh, output of the rat. When we put albumin into the rats, contrary to what you do with other types of um, fluid administration, you have an overall improvement with an explanation which is mainly due to the reversion of hip myocardic hypoxia with a, diminu a decrease in the hypoxic factor which is very strong so theoretically looking at the cardiac failing um, this is a relatively uh, important impact of course there are clinical studies as well there's the safe study um, which use 4% albumin dose showing that albumin is safe and perhaps interesting for severe cases of sepsis out of 7,000 patients and in the group of patients under septic shock 
who had an albuminemia of 25 grams per liter, just at the very limit of what is needed. When you add it to these patients, you add the albumin, you have an impact, a positive impact on mortality. So we're moving on to a criteria for a fluid administration, which is, um, is a very difficult one, mortality. But if you, this is a possible consequence. And then there are the two studies on 20% albumin, which are different mainly in terms of design because the Italian study took and sought very intelligently to achieve 30 grams per liter. Two studies that looked at severe cases, elderly patients for the Italian's case with albuminemia, 25 grams per liter, starting from a, what was a threshold level to be reached and who had received albumin in the first 24 hours. And when we look at the French uh, study, the patients are younger and they have a much lower albuminemia. All the patients who had been treated in the first 24 hours were excluded. We're far from the threshold. There's the Italian study, which enabled them to trace albumin at a level of 30 grams, which was their threshold, whereas in the French study, with the doses that were planned, only approximately two-thirds of the patients had albuminemia uh, above 25 grams per liter on day three or day four. So we're not necessarily looking at the expected outcome if we are seeking to examine the non-oncotic uh, effects of the product. No decrease in the mortality in the Italian study and in the post-doc analysis decrease in the mortality in the patients that we're looking at in those in septic shock. Um, in the French study, no difference in the mortality, much lower mortality with uh, per protocol the advantage of albumin is a decrease in mortality of 20% but no significant impact so we cannot diminish mortality even though in the meta-analysis that has emerged since when we look at and compare all this you see that when we examine here for example the studies that compare 28-day mortality we are just uh, on the decrease we're just non, we're on a non-significant tranche of the figures, but we cannot consider that this de decreases mortality. What we can say is that it decreases the volume and it helps to have uh, patients w with uh, less fluid administration. It enables a faster weaning, weaning from the catecholamine. So it's a product that may be of interest in that regard. The undesirable effects, well, you have all the uh, the allergies, all the effects uh, which are inherent to everything, but it's very rare in the 8,000 patients who were in the sample in the multicentric studies. We must compare albumin at 20% to albumin at 4% or 4 to 5%. At 4 to 5%, there were never uh, any undesirable side effects. In 20% doses, there were suspected uh, effects regarding renal failure. So if we give it to patients who have not had proper administration, it may provide renal disorder. When you look at the patients who are most subject to complicated cirrhosis, to severe forms of um, renal failure, the studies show that there was a decrease in, uh, in uh, renal insufficiency in those who had received albumin compared to those who had not been given uh, albumin. And in the two studies that were used, there were no renal injuries, whatever the criteria that were used. So in that respect, uh, very few negative side effects. Now, now what about the cost? Well, uh, as you can see in the magazine the review, albumin comes out as more expensive. If you look at the cost effectiveness studies, there are no studies. There's only one that has been done by Bertrand Guinet. I'm not able to really analyze this kind of uh, complex literature, but he looked at this in relation to uh, the patients. And Bertrand Guimet says that when you look at this, the perfusion of albumin uh, in, is cost effective for sepsis, but this is the only article that we have on this particular subject in a review, which is not an economic uh, publication. Is it an ideal product? No, I don't think there's any such thing as an ideal product.
what, when does it become of interest? That remains to be seen. If we look at the uh, research, it's uh, theoretically it's a very interesting product. It's a product which shows very high tolerance. The cost is high. Is it cost effective? I'm not able to say. And we must look, I think, and I'm sure that albumin vendors uh, are looking at this. We have to examine the quality of the albumin if we want to improve the um, non-administration effects, which are uh, extremely effective. Thank you very much.